Hello everyone, today I'm happy to present to you the all new 2016 Ford Mustang. And today's review is taking place at Hegarty's Ford, situated in Letterkenny, County Donegal. For all contact information regards to this dealership, please see the description box below. So in today's review, we'll be looking at the interior of the car, I'll explain all the features work, we'll also start up, look at the engine, go over the performance data and take a look around the exterior. Nicely designed key fob. Press this button twice to unlock the boot. You can also lock and unlock the vehicle using this red pattern on the door handle. Just press it once to lock it. And after waiting a second, just grab the handle to unlock the car. It's got completely frameless windows. And also when you open the door, the tail lights illuminate. Also another nice thing on the Mustang that was on the uh, previous Mustang that I reviewed in Canada. If we just look under the door mirror, you can see this projector lamp. And it projects the pony horse onto the ground. Don't know how well you can see it in the showroom, but it looks very nice at night. It has a full black leather interior. Looks very, very nice. You also got these nicely designed chrome door handles, which are lock and unlock, and your front electric windows. And also the side plates are illuminated. Full electric driver's seat. So the Mustang has a completely keyless uh, engine start stop. So if we just leave the keys here in the cup holders, the engine start stop button is located down here. Press it once to turn on the auxiliary power. To fire up the engine, just apply the clutch and hold in the button. So we're just gonna leave the engine off because we're sitting in the showroom today. Uh, we'll power it on for the exhaust clips later on. So as far as the interior goes, well starting with the steering wheel, it's got the classic Mustang look. So it does, it looks really nice. You got all your main truck computer controls located here. You've got cruise control, Bluetooth, and then your standard volume and radio controls located here. This car also has selectable electric rack and pinion power assisted steering. So uh, we're just going to look through the truck computer very briefly using these controls. There is a lot of menus in this truck computer. At the top right of the little screen there, it also has the digital compass. Just tell me that we're facing southeast at the moment. So we're in uh, one of the truck computers at the moment, uh, it's truck computer number two. If I press down, I can go through the fuel economy, fuel history, average speed, and uh, truck computer one. If we press left, we can go back into your main menu. So you can look at things such as your engine information, tire pressure monitoring system, your gauges. There's a lot of different gauges because this car is a turbocharger. Uh, there's a boost gauge as well for you to go through. Inlet air temperature, oil pressure, oil temperature quite a lot to look at. You can also look at the truck computer and information which we were just in. Track apps, driver assist settings, uh, your, just your main general settings for the colors and uh, the my key settings and display settings of the car. There's quite a few things to go through but I think for the majority of the time you would leave the screen on the truck computer and fuel consumption. The gauges are very nicely laid out. Looks really good. Off to right here, you got your automatic headlight controls with your front and rear fog lamps. This car also has automatic rain sensing windshield wipers. 
Now, the interior of previous Mustangs uh, has always been described as not the best quality, if I'm honest. They've always kind of had a few cheap feeling materials. Uh, Mustangs have never been praised for their interior quality. This here, though, the brand new sixth generation Mustang, the interior feels really, really nice. I mean, it feels very upmarket. It's got these lovely black perforated leather seats, which are extremely comfortable. It's got a nicely designed center console. You got the illuminated cup holders here. Uh, I believe if I turn on the lights, yep. If you turn on the lights, uh, the colors illuminate there. You can actually change the color of the cup holders. I just remember that from uh, when I reviewed the previous Mustang in Canada. As you can see, lovely blue lights illuminating there. Let's just turn off the lights here. You also got a nice big handbrake lever as well, located off to the passenger side. This car also has the six-speed manual gearbox, and the gear changes are really nice and close. And to engage reverse, just pull up on this lever here left and up and the backup camera and guidance lines come on so we're going to look at the uh, touchscreen unit it's an 8 inch touchscreen and it's the new Microsoft Sync 2 so uh, let's just power it on using this button here sound quality is very good from it very nice. So you got uh, your four different quadrant screens here. Um, those of you who have driven modern day Audis, you'll be familiar with this kind of layout. It's got the four different quadrants. Nice simple display. You got everything here. You got your digital time, you got your um, outside temperature meter, and you got your compass. So you can uh, go through the Bluetooth from here, you can go through your radio stations, and you can actually power on the uh, climate control from here as well. But we'll look at that a little later on. So if I click the settings button down here, you can adjust just about every aspect of the car here, sound, display, vehicle settings, general settings, help. Um, you can turn on and off the auto dimming for the mirror. You can adjust just about everything and if I click on the top right here you can go into the infotainment system. So you can go through things like your calendar which is very nice to have, your apps, uh, any notifications, um, where am I will give you your uh, position, your latitude and longitude. Uh, let's see if we go into climate. Yeah, this is the climate control. You can adjust everything uh, from here, as you can see, or you can just use the manual buttons located down there. It's a very nice system and easy to use. It's the same one that um, Ford are using in the Mondeo. So I'm already kind of familiar with it because I used it when I reviewed the brand new Mondeo. If I click entertainment, you get all your different radio stations. You can select between AM and FM, uh, DAB radio, CD, USB. We press this arrow here, SD card, if you have any music obviously on an SD card you can plug it in and listen to that and also Bluetooth audio, so if you Bluetooth your phone you can listen to music from it through the radio. It's a beautiful display so it is, it's very nice and easy to use, it does not take that long to get used to. And also all the dials in this car are very nicely finished, if you just look at the dial here for the volume controls, so the, I think I believe this is an aluminium finish and it's just got these very nice kind of rib patterns here. Everything has such a much more upmarket feel. And if we just look at the climb controls, you can also get this car with heated and ventilated seats, which would normally be located down there, but I believe they're an optional extra. Uh, I believe there are a few differences between the European and the American Mustang, but I'll talk about that later on in the video. So you got your max AC here, on and off, your fan speeds, um, automatic mode, just about everything you want. But as I said, you can also adjust it using the touchscreen as well, if you prefer. But we'll just power it off for now. And so beneath the air conditioning controls, you got these four individual toggles. So uh, the first one says mode. If we press up on that, you can go to uh, your different driving modes, normal, sport, race and track, and uh, snow and wet modes. Majority of the time, I think you believe in normal. But beside that, you can adjust the steering feel from normal, sport, and comfort. And then the next one beside that is the traction control. And then the last one is actually just your hazard indicators. And then of course you got your engine start stop button located there. You also got a cigarette lighter and a USB plug-in. This car also has a shaker audio system. It's also got this leather armrest located back here. Good bit of storage so it is, nice and deep and illuminated. It's also got an ashtray which is removable. You also got your USB and SD card slot and also located here is just a 12 volt power outlet. Handy to have. I also really like the brushed aluminium trim at the top of the dash, feels very nice so it does. You also got the nice chrome housing going around the uh, vents as well. 
Also, the top of the dash is good quality as well, so it is. You've got leather here on the passenger side and on the driver's side. And again, on the passenger side, you've got this since 1964 Mustang plaque, which I'll talk about again later on in the video. The interior of this car really does feel very premium and upmarket. It feels like a European car, so it does. I don't believe there's a single cheap feeling material in here. Even this part of the center console, which is plastic, feels of good quality. And also you got the nice chrome design going around the shift booth as well, with the Microsoft Sync logo engraved into it. You also got a tiny little bit of storage located down here. It's nicely padded with rubber, so you can put like uh, your keys or some coins in there and they won't slide about too much. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back seats. So to slide the seat forward, just pull this handle here and then use this uh, electric button here and the seat slides forward. Now obviously the Ford Mustang is not the most spacious car in the world, so as you can probably tell by the passenger seat, there wouldn't be a whole lot of legroom. And if I'm honest, my head is actually touching off the rear window, not the roof, the window. Um, but you know, I suppose it's a handy enough four-seater if you want to go on a very, very short trip. Um, last time I sat in the back of a Mustang, it was a convertible, we had miles of headroom. And legroom didn't seem that bad, but realistically I don't think you're going to want to set too many people back here. So let's turn on the vehicle's power. Also turn on the headlights, sorry, front and rear fog lamps, as well as the hazards. And the both front windows are fully automatic. And we'll take a look around the exterior. The exterior colour in this car is called Shadow Black. It features high intensity discharge projector headlights with three LED daylights off to the size as standard. The first thing you'll notice about the Mustang is the large bonnet which has two bulging lines tapering off towards the honeycomb grille. Coming around to the rear, the Mustang has these LED tail lamps. For legal reasons, the European model has different tail lights to the American spec. It also has dual bright slash cut exhausts. The rear fog lamp and reverse lights are located at the bottom of the bumper. Food space for a car of this type is actually quite decent. It can accommodate up to about 408 litres of room, and underneath the boot floor there is a tyre inflation kit. The boot can be opened one of three ways. You can press the button underneath the steering column off to the right, you can use the key fob, or you can use a button which is hidden directly under the Mustang badge under the bumper. The Ford Mustang has been around since 1964, making it 52 years old, and it is really the underdog when it comes to the American muscle cars, so much that when Chevrolet released the Camaro in 66, it managed less than half the sales of the Mustang, and in fact even today the Ford Mustang is continuing to outsell the Chevy Camaro and the Dodge Challenger. Now the new 6th generation of the Mustang is a very striking looking car, however Ford have managed to implement some familiar styling cues from previous Mustangs, such as the taillights which are similar to that of the first generation. The three LED lights beside the headlamps are also a throwback to the three lines engraved in the same location, also on the first generation car. The plaque on the dashboard, as I mentioned earlier, is also part of the classic styling, as it reminds us of just how long the Mustang has been around. Now I admit, when I first saw pictures of the Mustang a few years ago, I wasn't sold on the styling, and I thought the idea of a four-cylinder engine and a Mustang was laughable. However, over time I have got used to the styling, and after seeing it in person, I really do like it. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It's got a lot of presence and it has really bold styling from just about every angle. The EcoBoost actually makes a lot of sense as well. It means that the Mustang costs less now than the GT, and it's easier to run, yet still a very fast car. And this is actually also a unique feature, as there is no EcoBoost equivalent for the Chevy Camaro or the Dodge Challenger. There are two body shapes available, the Fastback that we have here and the Convertible. For Europe, Ford are offering the EcoBoost and the GT models only, and you also have the choice of a 6-speed automatic transmission with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. For the American market, they are offering the V6 and the upcoming Shelby 350R in addition to the GT and the EcoBoost. Now, as I previously highlighted earlier, there are minor differences between the Euro and US spec cars. In the US, you can have a standard or a premium variant of all the Mustangs. However, in Europe, there is a choice of just one car, and you can just add optional extras on top of that. There are a few differences between the EcoBoost and the GT. 
For instance, the GT has a different grille, exhaust, front splitter, and it also features launch control, a reworked gearbox, and a line lock burnout feature. The overall length is 188.3 inches. It has a height of 54.4 inches and a width of 75.4 inches. The total wheelbase is 107.1 inches. The Mustang features four wheel ventilated steel disc brakes with aluminium brake calibers. It also has these 19 inch double five spoke alloys finishing gloss back, sitting on Pirelli P0 tires. It features a double ball joint independent McPherson strut front suspension and an integral link rear suspension. So let's power on the Mustang and see how it sounds. Now I'm not going to be able to rev it too hard because as I said we are in the showroom. Well again the exhaust clip nonetheless. So again, let's apply the clutch and hold in the engine start stop button. It's got a very nice sounding engine, nice little rumble off it. Release is located on the passenger side footwell. The engine is the same one found in the Focus RS but has slightly less power. It's a 2.3 litre turbocharged 4 cylinder EcoBoost that produces 319 brake horsepower, which is fed through a 6 speed Getrig MT82 manual gearbox, which has 3.31 gear ratios with a limited slip differential. It also has a top speed of 145 miles per hour and produces 320 foot pounds of torque. Estimated miles per gallon is around 35. So we're just going to finish up the review. I am so so happy I finally got to review this car because um, unlike Ford dealerships in the United States, um, Ford dealerships in Ireland don't really stock up on high performance cars like this. Like if you go to a Ford dealership in America there's probably dozens of Mustangs in every Ford lot. Apparently in Ireland there is a place in Dublin called the Ford store that specializes in performance cars. Now this is the only Mustang that Hergitys Ford planned to order in. This is actually a customer's car and um, if I miss this car I would have to go to Dublin to review another Mustang so I'm really really happy I um, got the chance to film this car today. I do love the new Mustang. Um, as I said in the review I wasn't very sure if I was uh, fond of the styling when I first saw it a few years ago but it has grown on me and I think the car looks absolutely epic so it does and the interior is beautiful so it is. As I said earlier no cheap fee materials in here it feels like a proper quality premium upmarket sports car. Um, I mean, I don't know what to say. So I don't. It's it's great to be behind the wheel of a Mustang again. It does feel kind of weird though, uh, sitting on the uh, right hand side of the car in a Mustang because obviously this is the first time ever they've made one uh, in right hand driving brought to Europe. Normally they're always on the left. But anyway, um, I really love the car side there. I'm kind of lost for words. I I just when I first saw it coming. Uh, down the laneway there where that uh, Fiesta is coming. Uh, I was just like wow, it looks amazing And I think you really have to see this car in person to truly appreciate it The best thing about the new Mustang especially with the styling is it's modern it's cool It looks great, but it also has classic design in it 
if you just look at some Mustangs of the past, you'll see a lot of uh, styling references, such as the three individual LEDs there that I was talking about earlier. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this full net tour of the all-new 2016 Ford Mustang. Maybe someday I'll get to review the GT version with the V8. Hopefully, we'll see what happens anyway, but don't count on Ford dealerships around here getting many of them in. So everyone, thanks for watching. See you again next time.